I'm here with David Lesprens. He's been helping wealthy individuals leave high tax countries, renounce their citizenship and move to very low tax countries in order to obviously reduce their taxes legally. David, if you can tell us a bit, how do you leave a high tax country properly and what kind of ties do you need to cut? Sure. So in setting up a strategy, people often focus on the destination. But when you're trying to map a backup plan, you have to look at where you start. So there are different issues if you're leaving Australia or Canada or the UK or the US. So you really have to examine how do I leave where I'm at right now? And once you figure that out, where do I then go to in the future? If we take them kind of one by one, Canada and Australia are very similar in that they consider you to be a taxpayer if you spend too much time there. They call it sojourning 183 days plus. But they also have something called a closer connections test, which means that you have to, in determining your departure strategy, you really have to look at not only severing ties in Australia or Canada, but also acquiring ties in another jurisdiction. That's why for Australians and Canadians, part of the the planning that we often do is move them from those countries to another country which has a tax treaty with Australia or Canada. And that then allows you to use the treaty position to defend yourself against ATO or CRA. Got it. Then one of those low tax tax treaty countries would be, for example, Portugal or similar. Portugal with the non-habitual tax residents, Ireland, the UK, Malta, Cyprus, lump sum jurisdictions like Italy or Greece or four-phase system in Switzerland, those are all jurisdictions where you can move from an Australia or a Canada and not pay more tax because of a regime or a tax strategy that the new country has in trying to attract foreign golden geese like our clients. If they're moving to Dubai from Australia or Canada, let's say, what ties do they need to cut off? Essentially, pretty much everything. The best analogy that I can get is when a client becomes resident or how you become non-resident, when does water become soup? Well, you add a few major connections such as home or where dependent children are, all of those are, are elements. And at some point water will become soup. When you're becoming non-resident, you're doing the reverse. So Canada says if you have any two of the three, which is a home available to you, a dependent spouse or dependent children, if you have two of those three, we're going to say that you are tax resident here. If you've moved to a tax treaty jurisdiction, will you mention Portugal, for example, you may very well have a property available to you in Canada. Let's go look at the UK because they have inheritance tax or estate tax, as some people call it. You have to also look beyond just changing your residence to changing what is called your domicile or ultimate home. And that is something and acquire a new domicile of choice. Now, the U.S. is a different animal completely. When we look at leaving the U.S. tax system, we're often dealing with Americans or green card holders. There's mechanically giving up the status of a citizen, which involves you renouncing your citizenship in front of a counselor official outside of the United States, or relinquishing your green card. Those events you need to be very careful for because you may be what is called a covered expatriate. If you're a covered expatriate, two sections apply to you. One that we hear a lot about is something called the exit tax. The other section, which we'll call the inheritance or gift tax, and what that is, is if a covered expatriate leaves a gift or an inheritance to a U.S. person. So an expatriate, for example, leaves an inheritance to a U.S. person child. That child is responsible for paying the gift or estate tax for that gift or inheritance, which is 40%. Do you see other countries like Canada, UK, Australia imposing citizenship-based taxation, just like the US, specifically Canada? Because that is talked about in the government. It was proposed uh, about two years ago. I assume that politicians in every government will try to get as much tax as they possibly think they can get away with. But the practical aspects are the U.S. traditionally had it and the U.S. was unique in a unique position to actually enforce it. The Canadian government really doesn't have the means to enforce citizenship based taxation, which the U.S. does through financial institutions. They just don't have the leverage. When it comes to the Canada 
exit tax. Can you touch on that as well? So Canada, let's compare it to the United States. Canada does not have a gift tax, doesn't have a wealth tax. So Canada can actually be a tax haven. But if you're a Canadian that's leaving, you've got income and capital gains tax. Just as when you die, you have a deemed disposition, you're dead. So your, your executor will pay capital gains tax based on what the fair market value was the day before you died. When you become non-resident in Canada for tax purposes, it's as if you're dying to the Canadian tax system. Somebody's right now in Canada or Australia or somewhere that they want to leave. So when a lot of people are considering renouncing or going out of their country, those, you could call them emotional roadblocks, mm -hmm. or if you can address that. Because a lot of people, they, they want to leave Canada, but you know their cousin lives in Canada. And you know if I leave, they're going to be uh, angry at me or something like that. That would be helpful. You're making the decision that every immigrant in history has ever made, which is I'm leaving because either I don't like something where I'm at or I'm attracted to something where I'm going. That takes a lot of courage. Really, at the end of the day, these are people who are saying, I'm going to put myself and my family first. I have been a high taxpayer in this country. I was born in this restaurant. I paid my bill. Thank you very much. And I've decided there's a better restaurant across the street. I have no obligation simply because I was born here. There's a, an economist named Albert Hirschman who said, if you don't like a situation, you really, it boils down to you have three choices. Exit, voice, loyalty. If you don't like the restaurant or you don't like the current deal that you have with your country, you can leave, you can voice, which is vote, you know, which, you know, you do every whatever number of years and hope that the person you voted for gets elected, that they have some impact, or you can be loyal. You can shut up and not say anything. So a lot of clients are realizing, you know, I'm, I'm sick and tired of being loyal. My voice, whether that's voting and or lobbying has not been terribly effective. So I'm going to explore the exit option. And people say, well, you know, some people will like it. Some people don't like what I have for breakfast. <laughs> I mean, there's always going to be people who don't like but are you going to live your life for what other people think of it? Or are you going to do whatever it is you're going to do? You dance for yourself. You don't dance for the other people in the room to appreciate your dancing. I have a number of clients who say, look, I pay half of my income in taxes every year. That is to go to the small number of social services I have, things to help my fellow citizens. And I want to spend the other half. He just says, look, that other half, that's my money. And I can either spend it on frivolous things, but that's not going to make me happy. Or I can spend it on philanthropic things that I care about and that I can see are, have a direct and effective impact. And, you know, no matter what government it is, no matter how earnest the politician, let's face it, governments aren't terribly effective or efficient charitable vehicles. So with the level of uncertainty that, you know, the wildfires that are out there, more and more clients are saying, I just want to put myself in a position where if I want to, I can trigger the exit strategy. Got it. That's perfect. As a U.S. citizen, yeah. get another citizenship. As a Canadian, Australian, U.K., get arrested in somewhere else, be ready to exit in three days. Awesome. Thank you so much for all the information, David. If my clients want to reach out to you and actually talk to you about reducing their exit tax, getting out of their home country, how can they do that? They can go to my website, which is lesperanceassociates.com and they'll find in the contact, they can either send an info at or David at, and I'll get that email. Perfect. The links will also be in the description below if you want to click them.